Hi everybody, uh, this is Vaughn Stewart and today's presentation is going to be about sort of deepening you and enriching your Wikipedia page and making sure that more people find it by integrating it more highly uh, into Wikipedia. So this is going to come in a few main ways. First, I want to talk a little bit about depth and undue weight. Um, the most enriching part of your uh, Wikipedia experience, other than citations from verifiable sources, uh, the multimedia aspect may be images. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and then linking. This is what will actually integrate it really highly into Wikipedia. Uh, and finally, we're going to circle back to the concepts we started with uh, and talk about, you know, as you develop further research on uh, this artist. So I just want to start off that, you know, as you do this research, um, remember that the undue weight provision uh, talks about a sort of neutral point of view issue where um, not uh, where different points of view are disproportionately represented in terms of their prominence. So neutral point of view here uh, says, you know, that all significant viewpoints that have been published by a verifiable source and should and they should be represented in proportion to the prominence of each. So the reason I bring this up is because as you have done research on this particular um, this particular artist, uh, it can be an issue where you don't represent you know something that you don't want to. That can be a neutral point of view issue, but also just sort of naturally as you do research, you can create undue weight issues where you've done a ton of research in a single area about the person and not sort of other areas uh, of their work or their life. And so you can create these undue weight issues just because you your research has been focused in a different direction as opposed to more general and more encyclopedic. So in order to avoid that, you want to make sure that you sort of spread out your research. Um, don't, you know, create a section that is, you know, super, 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 super in depth and detailed. And then the other sections have like really nothing, nothing there. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit later as well. If you have to do that, just make sure you talk about it on the talk page so that editors and other people know what sort of what you're doing. All right, so let's talk about images. Uh, since you're doing artists, you will probably want to represent some of their work in some way. Before we get into that, though, a few preliminaries about images in general. Um, usually when I talk with other groups other than people who are in art history, um, I often have to reinforce this, but I think this will be fairly readily apparent. Uh, make sure, because others are going to do it, that you read your images deeply and really think about what work they are going to be doing for you and how they are going to be representing your artist and their work. So um, if, for example, you have an artist who has done a tiny bit of sculpture, but mostly just does painting, and you just want to choose an image that will sort of work and, and enrich your page, and you choose a picture of one of their sculptures, well, that's not going to accurately represent them. Uh, that image is going to stand in for a lot. People are going to glance over this page and think, this is their work. And so you want to make sure that you are being very intentional about your image selection. To make a very broad, you know, uh, example of this, here's the horse page on Wikipedia. And you can see this image down here where they are representing sort of varieties of coat colors, bay and chestnut. Now, if I'm looking for a, a an image to represent the varieties of horse coat colors, I could choose lots of different things. I could choose this one that has some horse coat in it. But it also weirdly has the saddle as the most prominent thing. And with sort of the way that the photograph is composed, the way that the landscape is laid out, really sort of feels more like like Western uh, than anything else. Like that is the subject of this photo, not the horse's coat. I could choose something like this, which would be better in terms of actually showing detail 
in the varieties of the horse's coats. Uh, maybe this would not be a great picture if I wanted to get sort of all of the horse's coat in there, um, but it wouldn't have the, the, the actual subject here would be the horse's coat as opposed to the saddle picture. You also want to be careful not to just sort of plop down anything as it's going to make a bad argument. <laughs> it's going to make a negative argument for your ethos, your credibility as an editor. If you just sort of, you know, want to put down anything, if, if you are talking about this artist and um, if they are from, say, Ghana, and you just put down an image that is a picture and map of, you know, Ghana, that's not really going to be useful at all. And it's going to make a negative argument about your abilities as an editor. So be very thoughtful and intentional with your image selection. Most of the images you are likely going to use because uh, they are largely from recent artists are not necessarily going to be free from copyright considerations and constraints. There is a whole process here for thinking through copyright uh, issues, and I would highly encourage you to talk to uh, Maggie Murphy um, and your professor Elizabeth Perrell uh, to discuss some of these issues. However, these general guidelines apply on Wikipedia that if you do incorporate non-free content, you can do so in a few constrained ways. You have to make sure that there's not a free equivalent out there, meaning that there isn't something else you could use here. You've got to make sure that it hasn't been, um, that it, sorry, you've got to make sure that it has been published before, that this is not the first time somebody is seeing you know, this artwork or this picture of this artist, um, that it's, it, it has been out there before. And it also really has to be sort of needed, necessitated. It has to be significant uh, in its context. In order to incorporate these things, you do so through the visual editor or the code editor. You go to insert, uh, and then you do image, and then you're sort of off to the races. Usually, this will uh, send you towards Wikimedia Commons, where it, when you're adding an image, you first upload it to Wikimedia Commons and then you insert it into the page. There is another way that you may insert images into a page, and it actually depends on whether or not you own the copyright. So if you own the copyright to that image and you go to the visual editor or the source editor and you go to uh, insert, um, it will open up an, uh, an uploader that will allow you to directly upload and insert your image. It's fairly straightforward. If you don't have copyright, it will direct you to the Commons uploader. So what do those look like? Well, here's what they look like. On the left, you have the image uploader that you would see if you go into just the visual editor or the source editor and go insert image and then select the upload tab at the top next to search you see that you should check a box there that says, this is my own work. In other words, you're saying, I have the rights to this and I am uploading it here and I am, um, I, I irrevocably release this file to Wikimedia Commons under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 4.0 license. So if you have the copyright, you can do this and it just sort of does all of the work for you. If you don't, and it says this in the box. If you look below, the, this is my own work. I attest that I own the copy, blah, blah, blah. It says, if you do not own the copyright on this file or wish to release it under a different license, consider using the Commons Upload Wizard. That will take you over to Wikimedia Commons, uh, which is on the right here. And you will see that it actually has, as opposed to just a single upload, a process that starts with learn. And it gives you an infographic about what is okay to upload and what's not. You then can upload it, and then you have to go through the rights stuff, and then you have to describe it. It really is designed to make you stop and think about exactly what you're doing here in terms of uploading something for which you do not have the copyright. And again, if you ever need help, uh, please uh, just reach out. When you put an image on your page and you click on it to, to edit it, or when you're initially uploading it, 
you'll often be asked to put some information about it, including a caption and something called the alternative text, or as we'll call it here, alt text. Both of these are necessary, and both of them are a little bit different. So let's zoom in on this. Captions describe and interpret the image in terms of that page itself. So it is usually highly, is usually working in concert with the, um, with the text that is on the page itself. You can also do different things in captions. You can put in different formatting like bolds and italics. You can also put in links to other things. Alt text is also a description but it is a description of the image for screen readers. Alt text, alternative text, is a description that is going to be read to somebody who can't see the image who is using a screen reader. Alt text also is a little bit different than a caption. It is tries to be very brief and also a description of what the exactly the image is. So to illustrate it, let's go to this, uh, this actual Wikipedia page of dogs. If you look at this image over on the side, the caption is dogs display a wide variation on coat type, density, length, color, and composition. That's great. That's a great caption. However, it doesn't actually explain what the image is. So if I were providing alt text here, I may be a little bit more descriptive about what the image is not sort of in the context of this article, what is this image doing, which is, you know, displaying a wide variation. So in the alt text, I would put four photographs of dogs arranged as a grid, each displaying a different coat color and type. That will be read, you know, out by the screen reader and will help me understand what the image is to go along with the caption of sort of why the image is important. One important thing to know about alt texts, not everything needs it. So if you um, have a caption that is really descriptive and describes the actual image itself, not just like, oh, look, there are a bunch of types of dogs, but actually describes the image, then if, if your alt text would essentially be copying the caption, then you don't need alt text. If you think about it from a screen reader perspective, it is going to read the caption and then it is going to read the alt text. So if they're the same, it's just gonna be redundant. Also, sometimes you'll have decorative elements that are images like borders or things like that. It's not super common on Wikipedia, but it can happen. In which case, you want to have the alt text as blank. Don't just not have any alt text. You want, to, you want to leave it blank if you're actually doing the code. So um, the way that you can do this is in that alt uh, alternative text box. You can just put a, just put a space in there and that will uh, make it blank. So images are one of the most common ways to enrich your uh, Wikipedia page and make it more visually appealing. But another way to enrich it in the Wikipedia environment and integrating it into Wikipedia overall is linking. Within your article, you want to link to other things that are mentioned. There's actually a manual of style article on linking itself that I would encourage you to read. And it has a lot of fantastic examples. But you should be trying to link your article to other things. This is a balancing act though. You don't want to put too much, don't you don't want to put too many links in there. So as an example, just sort of basic stuff, things that everybody knows exist or sort of just basic things in the universe. We don't need to link them. So if I um uh if for example, I was mentioning that somebody was born 27 kilometers south of a certain city. I don't have to put a link for kilometers. That wouldn't really make sense. So you don't want to go sort of wild and overlink your article. You also want to make sure that you don't sort of link everything in the initial uh, beginning part of your article. 
uh, it really makes it sort of harder to work with and access. And also when you're creating links, you don't want to just repeat the same links over and over. Just the first time that you mention it, link it, and then after that, don't. Um, this will enable the, the sort of the, the readability to be really good uh, on your article. Another thing that you can do that will sort of increase the number of links that exist within your article is not just focusing on the body content itself, the lead, the table of contents, the content, but also thinking about adding other appendices. And there's a manual of style article on layout that sort of gives some guidance here. So if you add other appendices like further reading or external links um, to various pages, for example, uh, various, you know, uh, pages outside of Wikipedia, this can, you know, help make your Wikipedia page seem sort of just like it has a further depth in terms of its research and breadth. C also is a great other appendix that you can add at the end that will allow you to just sort of populate a bunch of other Wikipedia pages that you think would be really good for contextualizing the Wikipedia page that you're working on. You can also, in order to more highly integrate your uh, article within Wikipedia, is link to it from other articles. So if there is another artist that was really influential on your artist's you know, development, or there were other artists that this person was sort of, who, whose work this, uh, if there were other artists whose work uh, your artist was a response to or things like that, you may think about going to their pages and inserting a link to your page. Now, don't don't do this in bad faith. Do it if it makes sense for that article and for that page. Um, but it can be a way for other people to better find your article. If it doesn't like fit naturally on the page, you may think about putting your artist as a notable person in an appendix on that page in a see also section. Finally, when thinking about sort of integrating your page and linking it, one of the things that links a lot of Wikipedia pages together is categories. You should add categories to your article and you should be thoughtful about them and find what existing categories work well for you. It's potentially possible to create new categories, but Wikipedia has been around for a long time and if you think that that you will you will be served by creating a brand new category that hasn't populated yet on Wikipedia. It's likely not going to help anyone find your article. So when you're creating cat oh, not when you're creating, but when you're using categories uh, and applying them to your page, one of the things you have to be careful with though is scope. And what I mean by this is if you add a category and you choose something really broad, like for your artist, you just add Africa. That's not really narrow enough to help anybody actually sort of understand the categorization here. Now, I am maybe if you had a lot of other categories that more narrowly defined this, it would be okay. But if you think about that category, the continent of Africa, all of Africa, it can be so broad that your specific artist, it doesn't really fit, you know, very well. So make sure that you are searching for categories that are much more specific to your uh, particular needs. The last thing that I want to return to is that further research. Again, thinking about developing, you know, in different directions. So. Again, uh, undue weight can be a problem, and likely at this point you've done a lot of research on this artist, and there may be some favorite quotes, favorite anecdotes. Make sure that it there's a need to put those things on your Wikipedia page. It, it might be an interesting story, for example, but if it is not important 
to this person's encyclopedic representation, then it may not need to be there. The way that I like to express it is that Wikipedia is not, you know, it's not a catalog of everything that can be known in the universe. It is an encyclopedia. So if you have, you know, particular, you know, darlings that you really love from your research, make sure that there is a good reason why those are being, you know, ending up on your Wikipedia page. And it's not just because you like that story. The last thing that I want to leave you with is think about your Wikipedia page and how you can make sure you're being sort of a good Wikipedia citizen um, and how you can sort of show the editors that your work is valuable and in process. So it may be the case that many of you are working on an artist and sort of your research has led in, in one direction. That's fine, uh, but you want to make sure that you sort of head that off at the pass by leveraging your talk pages. And if you know that there are certain aspects of this artist that you're just not getting to, it might be a good idea to create you know short sections about those areas so that somebody can see how this page is developing. Again, leverage that talk page on there. Say like, this is how this is, uh, this is working. This is how this is developing. These are the areas that still need to be worked on and fleshed out. It can really save, you know, your work in a lot of ways. If somebody comes to an artist page and they see one section that is really in depth and rich and the other sections are really short, one of the options they have is to cut down the really rich section. If you used your talk page to say, you know, like, okay, more stuff needs to go in the short sections, not less stuff needs to go, needs to come out, um, less stuff needs to be in the rich section, then you can sort of, the, it'll be more likely that editors will keep a lot of that stuff around. Another thing that you can do um, that will show your engagement with this, um, this artist and area of knowledge is creating red links. Now, you've probably seen these on Wikipedia before, but red links are really just a link to a page that does not exist. Sparingly, you can create them in order to show other areas uh, surrounding this artist and surrounding this area of knowledge that should also be on Wikipedia. Now, the reason I say sparingly is because you want to think about what, from an encyclopedic standpoint, really needs to be represented, not, again, just everything that could be uh, its own Wikipedia page. The last thing to really sort of integrate this and to be, you know, again, a good Wikipedia citizen is make sure that you are creating a sense of collaboration on your page uh, and that you are also, you know, constantly striving to find consensus. That's a, at the heart of Wikipedia. You want to make sure that your page, even though it is, you know, a lot of your own research, um, is not just something that only you could understand and interpret and value. Remember your audience here, not just of random people who want to learn more about these artists who happen to find Wikipedia page, this Wikipedia page, but you have a secondary audience of as well of Wikipedia editors. And you want to make sure that things are set up, that you've leveraged the talk pages to talk about the shortcomings of this uh, article, about the, the needs for help of this article that allow for points of ingress of other editors. When you do that, it's much more likely that your contributions to Wikipedia will last for a very long time. With that, I hope that you all create some amazing Wikipedia pages, uh, and I look forward to reading them sometime. Thank you.